Hi students and friends, welcome to the channel, learn and teach by Sarayas. In this video, I'm going to talk about the specimen paper for IGCSE 0620 for the version 2023 and onwards. So I have selected paper four today. So let's continue with the video. This is the paper four theory, extended one, for examination from 2022, 23 and onwards. The duration will be of one hour and 15 minutes. So I'm reading the instruction for you. Answer all questions. Use a black or dark blue pen. You may use an HB pencil for any diagrams or graphs. Write your aunt name, center number, and candidate number in the boxes at the top of the page. Write your answer to each question in the space provided. Do not use an erasable pen or correction field. Do not write on any barcode codes. You may use a calculator. You should show all your working and use appropriate units. Information. The total mark for this paper is 80. The number of marks for each question or part question is shown in packet. brackets. The periodic table is printed in the question paper. So this is the first question. Question number one. Element X can undergo the following physical changes. These are the physical changes in figure 1.1. Solid X to liquid X, liquid X to gaseous X. The numbers are given. One, two, three, four. A, number one, name each of the number physical changes shown in figure 1.1. This is easy one. First is the melting. The melting takes place when solid changes into liquid state. Number two is the change from gas to liquid state. So it's condensation or condensing. Number three is a change from liquid to solid state, simply freezing. Number four is changing from liquid to gas state. You can write boiling. You are also allowed to write evaporation because evaporation also involves a change of liquid into gas state. Number two, one difference between boiling and evaporation is the rate at which the processes occur. State one other difference between boiling and evaporation. Remember, evaporation is natural process. Evaporation is natural process. So, it happens over range of temperatures. So you write evaporation happens over a range of temperature. But you need specific temperature in order to boil a liquid. So, boiling happens at a specific temperature. B. Describe the separation, arrangement, and motion of particles of element X in the solid state. Now, they are talking about the separation, arrangement, and motion of particles in the solid state. Now, separation, yeah, they are just, just touching each other. So, you write touching. Arrangement is regular. They are regularly arranged. 
motion, they are just vibrating about their fixed position. Vibrate about fixed positions. Element X is a group through uh, group three metal. It burns in air to form an oxide X2O3. Write a simple equation for this reaction. It's very simple. You write the symbol for metal X. And we know oxygen exists in the diatomic state. So you write O2. The complete equation will be X2O3. It's better to balance the equation. If you balance the equation, then you write 3 here, 2 here. So you'll get 4x plus 3o2 gives 2x2o3. Magnesium, calcium, and strontium are group 2 elements. A. Complete table 2.1 to show the electronic configuration of a calcium atom. You should know the proton number of calcium in order to write the electronic configuration. The proton number of calcium is 20. So let's start distributing electrons in each shell. In first shell, the maximum number will be 2. Second, 8. Third, 8. And the fourth one, again 2. If you will add these numbers, you will get 20. B. Describe how the electronic configuration of a strontium, strontium atom is, number one, similar to the electronic configuration of a calcium atom. Both belong to group two, so they have same number of outer electrons. Same number of outer electrons. You can even code the number of electrons also. Next point, different from the electronic configuration of a calcium atom. So it's very easy. If you look at the position of these two elements, look at the position of these two elements. Here you have calcium and this is strontium strontium so strontium is below calcium so it's in actually in the fifth period so you write strontium outer electron is in the fifth shell outer electron in Strontium is in fifth shell. Next question. C. Calcium reacts with cold water to form two products. A, a colorless gas P, which pops up with a lighted splint. A weakly alkaline solution Q, which turns milky when carbon dioxide is bubbled through it. A. Name gas P. Whenever metal reacts with water, they produce gas. Calcium is one of the reactive gas. So the gas will be hydrogen. Because this is the only gas which pops up with lighted sprint. So you write hydrogen here. Number two. Identify the ion responsible for making solution Q alkaline. So hydroxide OH negative ion, which is responsible for making solution alkaline, OH negative. Number three, suggest the pH of solution Q. Now they said it's weakly alkaline. The pH must be above 7 but below 12 so you can write any range between 7 to 10 number 4 write a simple equation for the reaction of calcium with cold water you know the symbol of calcium 
Ca symbol of water H2O. So we'll get calcium hydroxide plus H2. Ca OH whole twice plus H2. Valence equation, so we'll get two here. Part D. Magnesium reacts with chlorine to form magnesium chloride MgCl2. Magnesium chloride is an ionic compound. Number one, complete the dot and cross diagram in figure 2.1 of the ions in magnesium chloride. Show the charges on the ions. Magnesium is in group two. The proton number of magnesium is 12. They have already shown two electrons. And we know that magnesium, after losing two electrons, form Mg plus 2 ion. Mg plus 2. So two electrons are lost by magnesium atom. So I'm going to draw the rest of the electrons for magnesium atom, uh, magnesium ion. It is left with uh, 10 electrons. So two is already shown. So you'll draw eight more electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Also, you have to mention the charge on the magnesium ion. Chlorine belongs to group seven. And its proton number is 17. 2, comma, 8, comma, 7. It needs one electron to complete its valence shell. So both the chlorine atoms have gained one electron. So it will become 8. 2, comma, 8, comma, 8. These electrons are shown. So now I'm going to show 8 electrons for each chlorine ions. Remember, you have to show the electrons for chlorine ions with dot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Eighth electron is coming from magnesium, so it should be of cross. For this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we'll place minus charge on each chlorine or chloride ion. One physical property typical of ionic compounds such as MgCl2 is that they are soluble in water. Give two other physical properties that are typical of ionic compounds. Some common properties, they have high melting or boiling point. High melting or boiling point. What else you can write? Good conductor. In water, good electrical conductor. In aqueous or water. Or when molten. E, aqueous silver nitrate is added to aqueous magnesium chloride. A white precipitate forms. Write an ionic equation for this reaction. Include state symbols. So the reaction is happening between magnesium chloride and silver nitrate. It's an example of precipitation reaction. The reaction will be Ag NO3 plus MgCl2. The product will be Ag Cl plus Mg NO3 whole twice. Now they are asking you to write the ionic equation for this reaction. So if you look at the equation, both AgNO3 and MgCl2 exist in the aqueous state. 
the only white precipitate is of AgCl, which means it's ex existing in the solid state. MgNO3 hold twice also existing in the aqueous state. So in the ionic equation, common ions will be cancelled. So NO3 is a common on both sides. Mg also common. So we will be left with these ions in the end. Ag plus aqueous plus 2Cl minus aqueous gives AgCl solid. Question number three. Copper is a transition element. It has variable oxidation states. A. State two other chemical properties of transition elements which make them different from group one elements. Now you have to look for the differences between group one and transition metals. So these are the common differences. Transition metals form colored compounds or ions. So you write form colored compounds or ions. Next one, they are used as catalyst. So you write act as catalyst. B, when copper two oxide is heated at 800 degrees centigrade, it undergoes the reaction shown by the equation. 4CuO gives 2Cu2O plus O2. Number one, identify the changes in oxidation numbers of copper and oxygen in this reaction. Explain in terms of changes in oxidation numbers why this is a redox reaction. Change in oxidation number of copper from dash to dash. Change in oxidation number of oxygen from dash to dash. So look at the oxidation number of copper on both sides. On the left hand side, in 4CuO, the oxidation number of copper can be predicted by looking at the valency or charge on oxygen. Oxygen belongs to group 6, so the charge on oxygen is minus 2 here. So copper must be carrying plus 2 charge. On the product side, oxygen is present in O2 as well as in Cu2O. So in O2, the charge will be 0 as there is no charge on the element. But in case of Cu2O, again, we we'll look at the group number of oxygen, which is group 6. The change will be minus 2. So the only change we can see is minus 2 to 0. So the oxidation number of oxygen is increasing. So you will write minus 2 to 0. What about copper? On right hand side, we'll find the oxidation number of, of, of copper in Cu2O. Cu2O. We know the charge on oxygen. It's minus 2. And the overall charge will be 0. There are two atoms of copper. I will write 2x. So 2x minus 2 plus 2 is equal to 0 plus 2. 2 will be cancelled out on the left-hand side. So we'll get 2x is equal to plus 2. Or x is equal to plus 2 by 2. The answer will be 1. So the change will be plus 2 to plus 1. So I'm writing on above uh, Cu. So explanation will be decrease in oxidation numbers. You will write change in terms of decrease and increase in oxidation number. Decrease in oxidation number is reduction. Increase in oxidation number is oxidation. Number three, calculate the volume of o oxygen measured at RTP, which is formed when 1.60 gram of CuO reacts as shown in the equation. This is the equation. 
4 Cu O gives 2 Cu 2 O plus O2. So what we will do, we will convert the mass of Cu O into moles in order to get the moles of oxygen. So the MR of Cu O will be, we know copper 64 and oxygen 16. So we'll get 80. So the number of moles for CuO will be CuO will be 1.60 divided by 80. You will get 0 0.02 moles. According to the equation, 4 moles of CuO gives 1 mole O2. Therefore, 0 0.02 moles gives x moles of oxygen. We'll cross it. You'll get x is equal to 0 0.02 divided by 4. So the answer will be 0 0.005 moles of oxygen. What you will do, you will simply multiply this value by 24 in order to get the volume of O2. Volume of O2, 24 multiplied by 0 0.005 and the answer will be 0 0.12 pm cube. Copper metal is obtained when scrap iron is added to aqueous copper 2 sulfate. The reaction between iron and aqueous copper 2 sulfate is a displacement reaction. Said why this is displacement reaction takes place. Because iron is more reactive than copper. Iron more reactive than copper. Number two, write a simple equation for the reaction between iron and aqueous copper 2 sulfate. The symbol for iron is Fe, copper 2 sulfate. It is CuSO4 because Cu carries plus two charge and we know the charge on the radical sulfate, which is minus two. Same numbers. So we will ignore the charges. So it will be two, two. And these two are same numbers. So we'll get one, one. Both will be canceled. So these subscript will be exchanged. That's why you'll get CuSO4. The product side, you'll get FeSO4 plus Cu. A displacement reaction is one method for obtaining copper metal from aqueous copper to sulfate. Identify another method, method obtaining for obtaining copper metal from aqueous copper to sulfate. It's very easy, electrolysis. Thanks for watching. Press like and share my videos. For more videos, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.